Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak to anyone who has a new trucking authority, new trucking company or a new trucking business. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos, where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers, operating under their own MC authorities, running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk to the new guys, new trucking authorities, new trucking companies, new trucking businesses, however you want to refer to yourself. If you have been in the trucking game with your own MC authority for less than one year, listen up, share this video. And if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, drop us a line in the comment section below. For those of you who've been following our channel for a long time, those of you who've been in the trucking game for a long time, you know, don't click off. Let us know in the comments what you think uh, of, of this list. Should be five primary items. There's certainly more to be talked about. Uh, add those in the comments. Let's help out the new guys in the community. Uh, enough said there. Guys, number one thing that you should be focusing on is going to be the uh, your business plan. Review your initial business plan. Now, you do have a business plan, don't you? Now, I know that most of you guys don't. Most people uh, don't get into that point uh, to that point because they feel like it's fairly simple, it's very straightforward. They're going to be able to take care of things and uh, you know, things will work out. Uh, but as you know, most people don't plan to fail. They simply fail to plan. So don't fail to plan. Even if you're in business already, Get on that horse, start working on that, uh, on that business plan. Plenty of free tools are online, run some Google searches. You don't need an MBA, you don't need a business education. And the process of putting together that business plan, it's going to get that old noodle working and you're gonna find ways of improving things, what's gotta uh, go, what's gotta be improved, what's working, what's not working, what needs improvement. And finally, it will teach you and give you the options to adapt and to pivot, which is a skill that you're going to have to learn if you are to stay in business, at least in this industry. Next, number two, uh, guys, I, I had to put this one up there. Get yourself a trailer. Forget about power only. Now we've made a video about this several years ago. It's a bit dated, but it is still relevant to this day. I'll leave a little card here in the corner. Take a look at that video. It will be of huge benefit to you. I know a lot of folks jump into business, do all sorts of stuff, spend all their money on a truck, forget the trailer because someone told them that there's a lot of money to be made in power only. That's not true. Now, I know that even this video will have comments where folks will say the, the opposite. Now, you do as you please, but we have you know well over a decade of experience in this industry. And although we have worked with power only carriers, this is not the market to be playing those games with all the restrictions, with all the uh, problems that are in front of you, all the expenses and all the difficulties being as a new carrier. Help yourself out, get yourself a trailer. Just a regular drive-in will do just fine. Next, number three, customer satisfaction. Now I know what you're thinking, guys, come on, man, what are you talking about? I got a truck, you know, I'm just trying to deliver some freight, feed my family, make something happen. Hopefully things work out. I get myself a second truck, get me a driver, whatever might be the case. I get it. We all start in that same, uh, in that same spot, right? We all have to start at the beginning. But at the end of the day, customer satisfaction is a big deal. And I'm gonna break it down for you guys. Now, here's the thing. You wanna make sure to have on-time deliveries. Way too many guys that we work with say one thing, then we start working with them and they're late consistently on every single load. Why do you expect uh, you know, uh, you know, why do you expect them to be satisfied with your performance if probably you wouldn't be satisfied with that performance if you were a shipper, a receiver, and the driver was late, right? So on-time deliveries, open communication. You have to communicate. Way too many guys are sitting around uh, thinking that dispatch is going to figure out, you know, by the uh, sense that they've been sitting there and they don't have a door. Communicate with your dispatcher, communicate with brokers, communicate with people around you. Have an attitude of open communication. Very, very important. And it will get you places and will get you sometimes ahead of the line to get unloaded in your trailer. Next, uh, it's going to be uh, your reputation. And ultimately, that is part of your customer satisfaction. You are building up your reputation. Um, if, if you do something and you don't get caught 
you know that you did something wrong. Like if you do something wrong, you don't get caught. You know, whether or not someone else knows, you know, and it's your reputation, it will bring you down. Have that, uh, you know, have that sense of ownership. This is my business, this is my reputation, I'm gonna do things right. That's gonna get you places. Number three is gonna be your financial health. Now we made a video in the past, I'll dig it up, I'll leave a corner, a uh, little tab, you guys can tap on that and watch the video. Now, why it's important is because uh, that was straight from the you know horse's mouth where owner operators who had failed in business just openly stated what are the reasons. We tabulated them, made a video about it. Very important to watch that video because it will tell you the number one reason why owner operators say they failed. Number one reason was, I'll tell you, cut to the chase, it was poor money management. So your financial health in business is going to be super, super important. And what I'm talking about is reviewing three primary things. Review your cash flow. What is cash flow? Cash flow is liquidity. What do you have available? Review your expenses. What are expenses? It's your cost, operating costs, cost of operation. Those are your expenses. Review your revenue. And you might be asking, well, you talked about cash flow, what's the difference? Well, revenue, think of it as sales. If I sell something for five grand, but you have costs of $4,000, you have cash flow of a thousand bucks. So it's kind of like a profit margin. Now your cash flow can be considered that you have a cash flow of 6,000 bucks coming in, but ultimately it, it's not liquid. It's not liquid because there are expenses in place. So financial health, utmost importance. Finally, quit being, uh, being a hater. Now I know that sounds a, a little bit strange, but here's the thing guys, there are good brokers out there, there are good shippers out there, and there are good people out there. The problem is that when you're in the mindset of a hater where people in trucking love that, uh, carriers love to hate on brokers. And you know, in many ways, brokers have definitely earned that. But here's the thing, in all the years that we've worked, we've met a lot of great brokers, we made really strong relationships. Part of the reason that we do so well in dispatch is because we have those strong relationships. And guess what, if we had the mentality of someone who's always negative, is always expecting something bad, we would treat those people that way and we would miss the opportunity to foster a really strong relationship that would actually benefit you in good times and bad. Uh, finally, a bonus one for sticking around. Get all your permits, guys. We made a video about that. Again, I'll leave a little corner uh, tab. Click on it, watch it. If you have questions, you know, send me a text message, your name and email. I can send you an email that will help you get all your permits. Why would you need all your permits? A lot of people say, I don't want to go to New Mexico. Fine, don't, don't go. But if a really good load opportunity uh, appears that pays really well, or you could even maybe deadhead out of there to Colorado or something like that, then maybe it's worth it. Here's the thing. A lot of these permits are really easy to get. A lot of folks don't want to go through the monotony and the paperwork of getting it. But if you have those permits, keeping them up is quite simple, very inexpensive, and it opens up the opportunity for you to take advantage of different market conditions and availability and freight that other guys simply won't be able to take advantage of because they didn't take the time, they were too lazy, uh, they, you know, they just simply didn't do the work. So get all your permits. Again, if you have uh, if you have questions, if you don't know how to get them, if you need that email, just shoot me a text message or give me a call or shoot me an email, leave me a comment, whatever you gotta do, I'll send it to you free of charge, get those permits yourself, you're gonna thank me for it. So guys, I hope this list has been helpful. Please, all the veterans, please leave your comments in a in the comment section below. The new guys, questions, comments, concerns, all below. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the loads that we book for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. This week we have vans, reefers, and the flatbed. Everyone did quite well, although rates are visibly lower. However, our guys managed to still get decent rates and very good growth. So let's start off with a dry van. This is a Solo coming out of uh, Hiawatha, Kansas, going to Franklin Park, Illinois. It's a 39,000 pound load of dry food, 529 miles, booked at 1100 bucks, got them 208 a mile. Then North Lake, Illinois, going to Fargo, North Dakota. It's a 42,000 pound load of general freight, general products, 633 miles, booked at 1450, got them 229 a mile. Then Wapaton or or Waveton, North Dakota, going to uh, Tumwa, Iowa. It uh, uh, looks like Baylor Belting, 20,000 pound load, 525 miles, booked at 1150, got them 219 a mile. Then right out of Tumwa, Iowa, going to Superior, Wisconsin, with a 43,000 pound load of general dry freight, 456 miles, booked at 1100 bucks, got them 241 a mile. Then Superior, Wisconsin, zero deadhead, coming out to SLC, Salt Lake City, Utah, 18,000 pound light load of carton, 
1,325 miles booked at 3,100 bucks, 234, uh, 234 a mile to come out to Salt Lake and out of Brigham City, Utah. Uh, took a load to Cheyenne, Wyoming. It's a 45,000 pound load of bottled beverages, 456 miles, booked at 1,300 bucks, got them 285 a mile on that one. Seven days on a road, in fact, all the drivers did seven days on a road, a week on a road, Monday to Monday, ended up grossing $9,200, ran 3,924 loaded miles, got them on an average of 234 per loaded mile average. Excellent job, Reggie. You are leading the pack. Excellent gross, excellent job. Next, we got ourselves a flatbed coming out of Long Beach, California, going to Gillette, Wyoming. It's a 45,000 pound load of dry goods, 1,207 uh, miles, booked at 3,700 bucks, got them 307 a mile. Then Rapid City, South Dakota to Williston, North Dakota with a 45,000 pound load of palletized lime bags, uh, 50 pounds a pop, 329 miles, booked at 1,100 bucks, got them 334 a mile. Then right out of Williston, North Dakota, going to Berthoud, Colorado. It's a 42,000 pound load of oil and gas components, 647 miles, booked at 1,800 bucks, got them 278 a mile. They finished off out of Denver, coming out to uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, 47,000 pound load of rebar, 389 miles, booked a 750 bucks, got them $1.93 per mile on that one. All in all, week on a road, $7,350 gross, ran 2,572 loaded miles, got an average of 286 a mile on this solo uh, drive, uh, excuse me, flatbed. So that was Patrick as the driver. Excellent job there, week to week. Week. Patrick is doing a great, great job. Next, we're gonna move on to a reefer. Uh, coming out of Stanwood, um, actually no, this one's Columbus, Indiana, going to Mount Crawford, Virginia. It's a 42,000 pound load of food product, 547 miles, booked to 1,700 bucks, got them 311 a mile, excellent job. Then right out of Mount Crawford, Virginia, coming out to Kenosha, uh, Wisconsin. It's a 41,000 pound load of food product. 763 miles booked at 1120 got him buck 47 on that one coming out to wisconsin definitely made up the difference on the way back out of heinz illinois with a one pick four dropper coming out to cheyenne wyoming aurora colorado grand junction colorado and a final in salt lake city utah all in all it's a 8,000 pound very light load of medical supplies 1,598 miles booked at 3,600 bucks, got them two and a quarter on that one, and they finished off on a mountain home, Idaho, to Grandview, Washington. It's a 39,000 pound load of refrigerated food product, 351 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 285 a mile coming out to Washington. That's a really, really good job, especially coming out of Idaho at this time of year. Uh, week on a road, $7,420 gross, 3,259 uh, miles ran on this one, uh, ran his uh, loaded at 228 per loaded mile average. Excellent job, Mike, way to go. Next, we're gonna move on to, I believe, a dry van. Yes, it's a, uh, it's a dry van coming out of Marshalltown, Iowa, going to Denver, Colorado. It's a 40,000 pound load of AC parts and different AC units, stuff like that. 721 miles, booked at 2,476 bucks. <laughs> Definitely dispatch, work real hard on that one. 343 a mile. Excellent rate. Then right out of Denver, Zero Deadhead coming out to Billings, Montana with a 44,000 pound load of bottled water, 555 miles booked at 1550, got them 279 a mile. Then out of uh, Low Wyoming to Grand Junction, Colorado, took a 43,000 pound load of chemicals, filtration, as well as fossil fuels. Uh, that was 549 miles, booked at 1100 bucks, got them two bucks a mile on the dot. They finished off out of Delta, Colorado, coming out to Suris, North Dakota with a 42,000 pound load of dry goods. This one's 1,078 miles, booked at 2,000 bucks, got them buck 86 a mile on that one. Obviously, <coughs> excuse me, loads, uh, pricing, everything has declined. Week on a road, still managed to scrape by really, really strong at $7,126 on its gross, ran 2,903 the loaded miles, got an average of 245 per loaded mile manual, Excellent, excellent job. Keep up the great work, guys. Keep up the great work. We're gonna get through this period. Next, another dry van coming out of Stanwood, Michigan, going to Fargo, North Dakota. It's a 42,000 pound load of FAK, 723 miles booked at $2,078.75. Got them 288 a mile. Then Grand Forks, uh, North Dakota coming out to Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's a 40,000 pound load of food product, 915 miles booked at 1950, got them 213 a mile. Then Springdale, Arkansas to Dayton, Texas, a light load. General merchandise, only 11,000 pounds on weight, 497 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 201 a mile. They finished off coming out of Houston, going to Heber Springs, Arkansas. It's a 44,000 pound load of ingot. Um, 
496 miles, booked at 1,075, got them 217 a mile, coming out to a decent market. Uh, Thursday to Thursday, seven days on a road, gross $6,103.75, ran $2,600. 31 loaded miles at an average of 232 per loaded mile and a solo regular dry van. Guys, you can do it. Next, another dry van coming out of Paducah, Kentucky. And, and that one, by the way, was Mike. So excellent job there. Um, actually, I apologize. That one was David. Excellent job, David. Great, great job. Uh, doing a great job. I, I think I know which David this is. I wonder if you got any, uh, if you got any uh, scuba diving gun, I'm thinking I know the David. Paducah, Kentucky, coming out to Garden City, Georgia. A dry van coming out of 44,000 pounds of resin, 630 miles, booked at 1650, got them 262 a mile. Then Pooler, Georgia, Lexington, Kentucky, 43,000 pound load of dry product, 586 miles, booked at 1120. Got them buck 91 on that one. Then Shelbyville, Kentucky, coming out to Rockford, Illinois. This is a very, very light load, 2,000 pounds of pharmaceutical packaging, 416 miles booked at 855 bucks. Got them 206 a mile. Finished off with uh, Loves Park, Illinois, going to Dacula, Georgia, uh, McLeansville, North Carolina. So one pick, two drop. It's a dry goods load, 40,000 pounds, 1,137 miles, booked at 2,800 bucks, got them 246 a mile, averaged out Friday to Friday, excellent job. Seven days on a road, $6,425 uh, gross, 2,769 loaded miles, ran that at 232 a mile average there as well. Excellent, excellent job. And that was Rogelio, excellent, or I should say Rogelio, I apologize. Uh, and finally, we're gonna go to our last one. I believe it's a dry van, yes it is. So we got Butner, North Carolina, coming out to Clarksville, uh, Arkansas, 45,000 pound load of ammo cans that are empty, no, uh, no, no bullets in those, 968 miles, booked at 2175, got them two and a quarter there. Then out of uh, Gravette, Arkansas, took a one pick, two dropper to Austin, Texas, and Franklin, Louisiana, uh, Louisiana as a final. It's a 20,000 pound load of dock floats, 925 miles, uh, 952 miles, booked at 2,100 bucks. That got them 221 a mile. And then they finished off real strong out of Crowley, uh, Louisiana, coming out to Lorraine, Ohio, and a final in Youngstown, uh, Youngstown, Ohio. It's a 44,000 pound load of rice, 1,263 miles, booked at 2,300 bucks, got them buck 82 per mile on that one. And that was uh, Tariq, doing a great job on his dry van. Uh, you know, very nice to see your name come up. Very, very cool. Friday to Friday, seven days on a road, 6,575 gross uh, dollars, ran 3,183. Very impressive loaded miles at an average of 207 per loaded mile. Uh, average on his regular dry van. Excellent job, Tariq. Well done. So there you have it, guys. As you can see, rates are definitely down. However, it's no surprise. It is August after all, and this is certainly expected. Now, these are things that you're going to learn as you go through the business, as you kind of uh, rank up and get the, the years under your belt. Those will all help. However, right now, being a new company, take it, you know, the advice, take it to heart. Guys, get yourself a trailer. Make sure you have all your permits. Get your head straight with your business. Get your business planning taken care of. Make sure you have you know, the customer in mind. I get it, you're a new company with a used truck, with a beat up trailer, just started, barely making it. I get it, we've all been there. And this is even tougher now because of all the restrictions from brokers, from the markets, the problem with volume, capacity issues. Uh, there's all sorts of things, you know. Uh, Goodness, your insurance is through the roof. Most of the guys who've been in business for at least two years have uh, less expensive premiums. So we understand. And this is part of the reason why we're making this video. We want to be able to help you guys out. So if you have at least 90 days on your MC authority, if you have a trailer, if you have the willingness to work, if you're willing to go out and hit the road and stay on, uh, you know, on the road OTR for a couple weeks, you don't have too many limitations and you realize that you need some help. Look, there's no better time to get a dispatcher in your first year when you're not set up with anyone, when you can can work with someone who's actually established, who knows what they're doing, who has connections. And, uh, you know, sometimes we can get brokers to make exceptions, you know, no promises, but it is something that we've been able to help for many other customers over the years. So help yourself take care of these things and give us a call or text us if you have any questions whatsoever. Similarly for owner operators, look, even if you just have a truck, but you have, you know, all the requirements that you can discuss with Kevin, uh, if you have the willingness to work and, you know, if you, if you've 
basically, if you're fed up with all those out, uh, outfits that are basically nickel and diming you, they're not getting you the really good rates. At the end of the day, whether you're a carrier or an owner operator, you end up working with the same dispatcher. So, you know, the potential, the possibility is the same, but you know, it's up to you to pick up the phone, to, you know, dial the number, to speak with us, to send us a message, to text us, to call us, whatever you got to do. It's all out there. Call or text 801-448-6363 or go to our website at aftdispatch.com. And until next week, guys, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.